Okay guys, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than the normal survival and bushcraft. Today I'm going to be talking about my budget overlanding camping setup. Now, when I say budget, I want to make it clear that this isn't a cheap way of doing this, but it's a cheaper way. And what I mean is that if you look at a lot of the truck tents, the tents are designed to set up on trucks over their beds and such, usually run about anywhere from 2000 to 3000 sometimes even $4,000. And this is my way of creating a budget solution if you are a one-person camper. Some people may say, you know, why not just camp on the ground? And that is a good point, but with some of these overlanding trails, like this one in particular, the ground is extremely uneven, and you really can't set up a tent on it. In addition to that, sometimes, the ground may be too boggy or wet for you to effectively set up a tent. So while this may seem like just a tent that you put on the ground, there are some valid reasons why you might want to have a setup that can go into the bed of your truck, like this. So like I said, this is a budget uh, setup. The whole cost of it is no more than $300 to $350. And I'm going to be taking you guys inside, but I'm going to start with the outside and explaining how I have it rigged up. Now, I will say as well, this setup is definitely homebrew. It's not the most uh, easy to set up or intuitive, but it's a setup that can be done if you have the patience and the time. And of course, like I said, this isn't like a pop-up tent on the bed of your truck. You don't just, you know, unzip a few things, you know, uh, unzip, you know, the uh, package and pull it up. It doesn't work, you know, seamlessly, but it does work. So starting off with the outside of the tent, this is a Alps Mountaineering Zephyr one-person tent. And like I said, this whole setup is pretty much geared or oriented around a single person. Uh, you know, trying to do a three to four person tent probably wouldn't work. You know, depending on the truck bed size and length, you might be able to get away with a two person. Like I said, this is a one person and it fits just fine in, my, uh, in the bed of my truck and I have a six foot bed on a Toyota Tundra. So that is kind of the rundown for this. Like I said, it works well and the actual tent pegs come right to the kind of seam where the tailgate and the end of the bed are. So that is the outside of it. Now, of course, as you can probably tell, and maybe you can even hear, it is a pretty windy day. So in order to make sure that the tent doesn't just blow right over, I do have all four of the guy lines uh, out and taut, kind of holding the tent in its own place. This is where part of like what I was saying, you know, this does take a little bit of time and effort to put up. You gotta ha have guy lines you know, of course, to make sure that your tent isn't just going to blow over in the bed of your truck in the middle of the night. So it's not seamless, but it does work. In addition to that, so what I did to make the front of this tent work is once again another very um, homebrew solution. It's not the most professional, but because of where I'm camping, it's extremely rocky and I couldn't get tent pegs to go into the ground. I just legitimately tied off the corners of these uh, at the front of this tent to two big rocks on the ground. Once again, not a perfect solution, but it gets the job done well enough to give me what I need. And of course, I have a little bit of shade over here for some drinks, and I have this wide open so I can get some air into the tent. So that's kind of the outside, and I'll take you guys around, you know, showing you the uh, whole, what it looks like, you know, from not just a front perspective. inside where I'll break down the inner pieces of what goes into this, uh, what goes on the inside of this little tent. Okay guys, so sorry for the lighting being a little bit poor, but now let's talk about the inside of this tent. So like I said, this is the Zephyr one person tent uh, that I'm in right now. And you can see that it comes basically right to the edge of this tailgate. Now, on the inside of this tent, what I have is two things, and I wanted to keep it really basic, 
budget oriented and simplistic to set up and take down. So what I have underneath me is a Sea to Summit uh, ultralight long uh, air mattress and it's nothing particularly fancy. It's not insulated though you could go for that if you wanted to. However, I primarily set this up as a summer setup so I didn't really think it necessary to have an insulated um, <coughs> An insulated air mattress, especially being the fact that we are on a you know back of a bed of a truck, so you're not going to be dealing with as much loss of heat due to the ground, especially if you have a bed liner like this truck, it gets plenty of hot itself. So I have a Sea to Summit, uh, like I said, air mattress here, and then on top of that, I have a just a wool blanket, 100% wool army. Sorry, I have 100% wool army blanket here and this can be used in two capacities in a really warm situation like it is right now i have it down as an extra layer to help cushion me against the bed of the truck and it also acts in another capacity it can act as a you know covering as an extra layer of warmth should the uh, temperature change or should the climate change and i need that extra warmth i have the so next to that, uh, like I said, it's pretty basic in here. There's not too much. I just have a generic Chinese, uh, you know, um, non-name brand, uh, 40 degree rated sleeping bag here. It's nothing special, nothing crazy and cool, but I wanted to test it out and see, you know, how well cheap uh, sleeping bags work. And so far, you know, I've done a few nights with this thing and it works just fine for me. So, you know, compact down, fairly small. Uh, not super small, but you know, it compacts down small enough for me and what I need. So, yeah, so that's this thing. Being the fact that this is a truck setup, uh, you don't necessarily need, you know, really small, really light kind of equipment. In fact, if you were going to spend more money, I would go over to things that have a better emphasis on, you know, quality and durability. And run I think it's a pretty good setup. I like the way it turned out overall. I think it went pretty well. Like I said, the setup is not the best. It's not the most foolproof. It does have its flaws for sure. But at the same time too, it works, you know, works just fine. You can get a good night's rest. And the best part is it allows you to be mobile and to take your camping setup wherever you need it. So anyways, guys, this has been my budget overlanding camping setup. And as always, God bless and I'm out.